Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will be talking about the basics of character creation. This guide will be starting with some advice about options presented to you when creating your character and an introduction to the five currently playable races. Subsequent episodes will dive into each of the nine professions, covering their role and viable builds for PvP, OV World, Fractals and Raids. The first choices presented to you when beginning character creation are race and gender. Unlike other MMOs, Guild Wars 2 has no restrictions when it comes to race profession combinations. This is wonderful for players who just want to make a true badass, a bootalicious babe, or just a plain bonkers looking character. I would note that larger characters can run into camera clipping issues when undertaking jumping puzzles, and there may be some advantage gained by creating a very small character in World v World and PvP, so use your height slider with that in mind. Beyond these considerations, just have fun with the appearance options. There are many additional choices available when creating your character, but I want to assure players that once you have selected your race and profession, none of the subsequent choices will influence game mechanics. The choices you make from this point onwards only impact the personal story, and although you can take many paths, all narratives in the end lead to the same pivotal story event. So simply select the option which appeals to you, and then enjoy the story. Before you create your character, I want to share a little about the ethos of each race, starting with the Char. This beautiful bestial race was one of the main antagonists of Guild Wars Prophecies, where their war with the humans shaped the course of the game. Their culture is based around invention, industry and war. Their capital city, the Black Citadel, is stunning. With its ornate Victorian-influenced architecture, it feels like a steampunk dreamscape. Their starting area is the Plains of Ashford. These once human lands are painted in a nostalgic autumnal palette. As I adventured there, the contrast between char structures and the human ruins gave a real sense of the passage of time and the weight of history. Anet took inspiration from the Mongols and the Roman Empire for the Char, as well as themes around the Industrial Revolution. The Asurans claim intellectual dominance over all other races, but their brilliance is easily matched by the engineering prowess of the cunning Char. In law terms, the blueprint for every airship, submarine and firearm originated in the mind of a Char. They truly are a race apart, from their almost androgynous ascetic and their anti-theist worldview to their unique animations, this race feels different from any I have played before. The origins of the known race have recently been revealed, but for fear of spoilers I'll not share that here. There will be links to my lore video on the screen and below for anyone who wishes to dive into that. This human-like race is often described as giants, However, standing at only 9 feet tall, they are vanishingly small in comparison to the actual giants you will encounter in Tyria. They are also able to shapeshift into hybrid creatures, taking on the aspects of the spirits their culture reveres. Like many races, the Norn have been forced from their homes by the awakening of the Elder Dragons to survive, and in spite of their nomadic tendencies, the Norn banded together and created a safe haven at Holbrack. This city is considered one of the most beautiful in-game, and for good reason. Eternally locked in winter's embrace, this safe haven feels larger than life, much like the Norn themselves. We first encountered the Norn in Guild Wars 1's last expansion, The Eye of the North. There we follow the story of Jorah, a Norn hunting for her brother, Svania, the first Norn to be corrupted by the elder dragon Jormag. Anet took heavy inspiration for this race from Celtic culture, and you can see Celtic knotwork in their architecture, armour and tattoos. If your measure of a life well lived encompasses great ale, great company, and even greater adventure, you may have found your race. As a Norn, you must hunt legendary prey, make your name, and honour the spirits of your shamanistic culture. Your legend begins in the Wayfarer foothills, where you take part in the annual Great Hunt. So the Norn are big, boisterous and brilliant fun to play, but for heaven's sake, don't ask them to dance. The Asura have changed somewhat from their first appearance in the Eye of the North. Back then, they were brilliant, 
power-hungry, sharp-toothed, and utterly ruthless, with a side order of Bond villain, even a so-called good Asura, if you had to align them on the spectrum of light and dark, would be grey. Today, in respect of the player storyline, a nice developer has come and filed down their fangs, but they are still as egomaniacal as ever and well worth playing. If you picture Asurans as power-mad, mini Neil deGrasse Tysons with far, far, far less charisma, then you're on the right track. Originally subterranean, these rodent-like humanoids were forced to abandon their vast underground cities by the rise of the Elder Dragons. In the following 250 years, they have recovered and established a new capital city which floats hundreds of feet above the Maguma jungle. Called Ratasun, this homage to Egyptian pyramids is a shining example of the Asurans' genuine genius as magical artificers. Their entire culture is based around expanding their understanding of the primordial magics which make up the fabric of the Guild Wars universe. Very much like string theory, Asurans have the theory of the eternal alchemy. They believe everything is connected, and if they could just gain enough understanding of how, they could unlock the secrets of creation and perhaps use them to dominate all other races. You know, if they absolutely needed to. These diminutive egomaniacs have some of the best animations in game, and I for one would not be without my verbose and boastful hamster for all the shiny's interior. In the original game, humanity dominated Tyria, but now they are undoubtedly the underdogs. Some fear they may even fall the dwarves into extinction. Having lost Ascalon and Or in the Char Wars, and being cut off from the great kingdoms of Alona and Cantha, Kryta is alone. Their war with the Char, which has lasted for more than 250 years, is stalled, with an uneasy truce holding back the hatred and resentment that runs deep on both sides. Recent events have seen Kryta on the brink of civil war, but again, I tiptoe around spoilers here. Click the link on the screen or down below for more lore on that subject. Culturally, humans are the keepers of history and the masters of agriculture. They worship their pantheon of six gods, Balthazar, Duena, Grenth, Cormia, Lyssa, and Melandru. The other races view these entities as powerful beings, even the Norns see them as spirits of action, representing war, truth, love, and so on. In MMO terms, the human archetype is very much upheld in Guild Wars, with all the medieval trappings in place. Although some will shun this tried and true RPG mainstay, I think players just find it easier to relate to a human character, and they are a natural avatar. Humans are by far the most popular race to play, with their rich lore, fantastic voice acting, majestic city of Divinity's Reach, and the ability to create characters with that Scarlet Johansson look, it's little wonder why. Finally, we come to the Salvari, the first new race of Guild Wars 2. The idea of the Tree Children was born at the very end of the Eye of the North, but the actual character model design was evolving very late into the game development process. In fact, some of the earliest promotional art depicts a very different looking race to the one we find in game. The archetype filled by the Silvari is very much elven, with their childlike curiosity and deep links to the natural world. However, Anet's art team created something truly special with the Silvari. You have to look back to Farscape for even the idea of a sentient humanoid flora, and perhaps a cheeky nod to the bioluminescence of Avatar. The Pale Tree, a sentient magical, well, tree, is mother to all the Silvari. Also known as the Mother Tree, this benevolent entity protects and nurtures its offspring in the garden city shaded by its boughs. The grove is one of my favourite places. In the evening, luminescent pollen hangs overhead, and there is a peaceful, dreamlike quality to the environment. Culturally, most Silvari follow the teachings inscribed on Ventari's tablet. This tablet hangs in the Omphalus chamber, where players can interact with it and the avatar of the Pale Tree herself. There are seven edicts written on the tablet. Live life well and fully, and waste nothing. Do not fear difficulty. Hard ground makes stronger roots. 
the only lasting peace is the peace within your own soul. All things have a right to grow. The bloom is brother to the weed. Never leave a wrong to ripen to evil or sorrow. Act with wisdom, but act. And from the smallest blade of grass to the largest mountain, where life goes, so too should you. When you create a Silvari, you find yourself in a dreamscape, not even yet born into the world, and you will have to fight back the darkness which encroaches on that dream to even awaken. This is some of the best story foreshadowing I have ever seen in any game. On the 28th of August 2012, as the game launched, the story of the Silvari began, but not until the 2nd of December 2014, as season 2 reached its climax, did the events of the awakening become fully understood. For years you believed your race was born to fight the dragon, but as the story unfolds in Seeds of Truth and in the Heart of Thorns expansion, that idea is turned on its head. My first character was a Silvari elementalist, and she is still my main, for a truly unique journey with some shocking twists along the way, I recommend the Silvari. Let me know in the comments below the races you like to play and what new races you would like to see added to the playable list. For me, it has to be the Tengu. They are just beautiful, but I would also welcome the mysterious Lagos or even the Hulking Coden. So that's my overview of the five playable races. I will cover profession choices in my next guide. I hope my video helps you make an informed choice when creating your character. Please give a thumbs up if you liked this video and a thumbs down if you didn't. And as always, thanks for watching. Originally subterranean, these rodent-like humans were forced to abandon their vast underground cities by the rise of the Elder Dragons. Ah. <laughs>